What we find is that very particular constellation of traits tend to be very positive predictors of who's going to be an entrepreneur later in life and whether that person is going to be a successful, a high earning entrepreneur when he or she opens up a business. And some of the things we find are not surprising. It tends to be the people who are highly educated from very secure families that tend to be successful entrepreneurs. Other things are also not surprising. It tends to be people with a high IQ that tend to be very successful entrepreneurs. Other things are much more novel that we don't think have been identified. Things like very high self-esteem and a strong degree to which the person feels that he or she controls her destiny is also associated with being an entrepreneur. And then for people with wayward Teenagers, another trait that's associated with entrepreneurial success tends to be this risk-taking, aggressive behavior as teenagers. So it, it's not, it's the person, along with these other constellation of traits that tends to um, break the rules a little bit more, get suspended from school, take things by force. Um, so you know, robbery as a teenager is also positively associated with entrepreneurial success. Um, even you know, getting involved with minor drugs. It's not the case that all juvenile delinquents are going to become successful entrepreneurs. Um, and it's not the case that people that stay within the context of, of the rules you know, are not going to be uh, successful business people. We're just pointing out that certain combinations of skills, that, and, and it's this combination that's very important in our findings. In 1979, what happens is they interview a few thousand people who at, in 1979 are between the ages of 14 and 22. And then they follow them through time until, until today. Every year they interview them, um, except in the last decade or so, they've been interviewing them every other year, not every year. So we have this nice longitudinal study where we follow people through time. The people who define themselves as entrepreneurs and that meet our definition of entrepreneurship look really different. You know, the, the, the woman I'm talking about who's opening up her own software firm is really highly educated. She tends to have, you know, have a lot of self-esteem. She tends to be a risk taker. She tends to have gotten in trouble as a teenager, whereas in some sense the person who becomes a self-employed in landscaping or a plumber or, 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 or cleaning homes has very different characteristics. So this differentiation in terms of activities is also reflected in their traits as teenagers. The people who were really successful entrepreneurs could make 50, 60, 70, 80 percent more than they were making as successful salaried workers. So the upside potential as an entrepreneur was enormous. Of course, entrepreneurs make more. There are heroes for the business schools and, and economics departments. However, when people went and looked at how much entrepreneurs make, where they used the category of self-employed as a proxy for entrepreneurship, there are 10, 15, 20 years of studies all showing that entrepreneurs don't make more. So when you control for things like education and many other characteristics and you divide the world into the salaried workers and the self-employed, it actually turns out that the self-employed make, the median self-employed person makes less. And so this was just a great mystery. And then the question arises is maybe the self-employed which is a catch-all phrase that ca captures the hot dog vendor and the plumber, Michael Bloomberg and Bill Gates, and also the person that cleans homes is not the right way to measure self-employment. And that there's something different about an entrepreneurial activity when you're undertaking a risky venture with something novel. And so what we do in our research is figure out ways to categorize activities 
by whether the person starting that activity think it, thinks, views it as a novel, innovative, uh, risk-taking activity. When we do this, essentially, we separate very clearly the hot dog vendors from the Michael Bloombergs. And then what you see is when people engage in entrepreneurial activities, they tend to make much more, and they tend to be very different people, even as teenagers. The downside risk is not too big. So what we find is that the people who are successful salaried workers, that then step out and try to become entrepreneurs, if it doesn't work, we find that they go back to salary jobs at about the same income. And then they might try again. What's interesting is that as entrepreneurship became more of the focus of analysis in, in the United States, the questions start to change later in the survey to focus more on the nature of the business and how much people invested in the business. And so um, the survey questions reflect the, the changing emphasis on entrepreneurship in America.